page 394, Miss Spider's Tea Party by David Kirk. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like these, she sighed, who'd stay a while with me, I'd sit them down on silken chairs and serve them cakes and tea. Page 396. Two timid beetles, Ike and May, crept from the woodwork that same day. But when Miss Spider begged, please stay, they shrieked, oh no, and dashed away. Page 399. Three fireflies flew inside that night, their spirits high, their tails alight. They spied the web and squeaked in fear. We'd better get away from here. The little trio did not feel they'd care to be a spider's meal. 400. Four bumblebees buzzed by outside. Please come to tea. Miss Spider cried. The four ignored her swaying there. She waved a tea towel in the air. She took a cup and tapped the glass. Then one bee spoke to her at last. We would be fools to take our tea with anyone so spidery. Page 402, within the shadows of the room, just peeking from behind a broom, five grinning faces bobbed and peered. Miss Spider smiled. Her heart was cheered. Descending for a closer look, she danced into the gloomy nook, but sadly found those jolly mugs belonged, alas, to rubber bugs. Page 405. Some ants strode in. They numbered six, but ants with spiders will not mix. She brewed them tea from hips of rose. The proud platoon turned up their noses. Page 406. A fine bouquet concealed its prize of seven dainty butterflies. Miss Spider, watching from the wall, was not aware of them at all. Page 408. The tea table was set for eight with saucers, cups, and silver plate. The cakes were fresh. The service gleamed. Yet no one would arrive, it seemed. Her company, in no demand, left her a cup for every hand. Page 411. Nine spotted moths kept safe and warm in shelter from a thunderstorm. They stood beneath an open sash and watched the jagged lightning flash. Miss Spider dropped down on a thread a silver tray above her head. She'd hoped 
to please them, but instead they flew away in mortal dread. Page 414. They've left me all alone, she cried. She dabbed her eyes and sadly sighed. It's plain no bug will ever stay. Her tears splashed down upon the tray. 417. Ten tiny steaming cups of tea were perched atop her trembling knee. She sipped and sobbed, then heard a cough, and turned to see a small wet moth, a fragile thing so soaked by rain, his wings too damp to fly again. 418. She smiled and took a checkered cloth to cloak the frail and thankful moth. They talked and snacked on tea and pie until his tiny wings were dry, then lifted him with tender care. She tossed him gently in the air. 420. The moth told Ike, then Ike told May, who went from bug to bug to say, There is no reason for alarm. She's never meant us any harm. So later on that afternoon, assembled in the dining room, eleven insects came to tea to share Miss Spider's courtesy. 4.22 Twelve tender violets in a vase presented at Miss Spider's place. Set by her chair, so neatly spun, she munched the blossoms one by one. Her friends were glad to watch her feast upon the floral centerpiece. It was a great relief to see she ate just flowers and drank just tea. Miss Spider's reputation grew before too long our hostess knew each bug who crawled or hopped or flew and all their lovely Children, too. The end.